So my guest this morning joins me from Boston University. He's doing phenomenal research on the power of language and political power, and uh, then known as uh, Zaire, now known as the Democratic Republic of Congo, is looking at the presidency of Mobutu Sasaseko. Mr. Joshua, thank mm -hmm. you so much for making the time. Thanks so much for having me. I understand that you speak about four languages. Uh, yeah, so uh, the four national languages. Four uh, national languages yeah, of for, the for Congo. Congo. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful, wonderful. I was gonna, I was gonna say Mbote Sangonini. Ah, Sangu Malamu Penza. Wonderful. That's wonderful. of course Lingala, the uh -huh. language that, you know that I discuss in this article. Mm -hmm. so, that is mm -hmm. perfect. So, what what are the languages? Yeah, so um, so the four national languages of the DRC are um, Lingala, Swahili, Kikongo, and Chiluba. Mm -hmm. And so they're effectively regional lingua franca spoken in different regions of Congo. Mm -hmm. So for my research, um, I've done multi-sided field work um, across those four linguistic zones. And so used I you know learned and used the four national languages to really get into those different national language communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. So yeah. I understand that you have an article that's coming out mm -hmm. of uh, the History of Africa Journal mm -hmm. that is published by Cambridge University Press. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So yeah, so an article coming up in History in Africa, which will be a really cool opportunity to sort of work on my methodology. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's perfect. So now for starters, I, I would want us to get into the details of your research, particularly mm -hmm. this article that's coming out in it should be January, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I understand that it shows the relationship between language and political power. Mm -hmm. And uh, you reveal how Mobutu's regime's use of Lingala yeah. contributed to the privatization of the Zairean state mm -hmm. and uh, the fracturing of the Zairean society, but also the strengthening of the Zairean and later Congolese national identity. Exactly. What, what is the the story behind this? Yeah. So um, that's a, that's an excellent summary of these kind of overall views, right? Looking at sort of the effects, different different effects of the regime on mm -hmm. Congolese society, mm -hmm. um, and then the other element that I sort of bring in, right? In, th in thinking of my title, right? Looking at um, the the power of language mm -hmm. and the language of power. Mm -hmm. So I'm also bringing in consideration of um, sociolinguistic methods to mm -hmm. do uh, African history mm -hmm. and post-colonial African history in particular. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the background, um, this, this, this article really is a, you know, as I was saying before, is really a chance that where I'm looking at um, in, in developing, you know, my methodological approach and also my case study mm -hmm. that I look at in more depth in my dissertation and then in my upcoming book project. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with with the Mobutu regime, uh, he took power in 1965 mm -hmm. and then ruled for uh, 31 years until the beginning of 1997. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that that's always struck me, right, was that it's it's this regime that's been studied very in depth by many political scientists. Yes. Um, but this one element of the, the language that that his regime used, mm -hmm. um, I felt like had not really had not really been examined in as much depth, mm -hmm. and partially that is because um, the sort of informality mm -hmm. and um, orality of mm -hmm. Lingala within the regime, mm -hmm. where a lot of previous studies have focused on, um, and and these are, you know excellent mainly political science studies of the regime, mm -hmm. they focused on sort of the state, they focused on. Um, you know, administrative documents, uh, interviews with key informants, mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of given us a really excellent picture of this uh, brutal patrimonial regime, which was also like very successful at maintaining power. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so one major way the regime has been examined, right, has been through this lens of uh, really the Cold War context oh, where yes. yeah. Mobutu, of course, was, you know, close ally of the mm -hmm. United States and, mm -hmm. and received U.S. support throughout his time. Uh, in power, but then you know, as I kind of got into the field, you know, and got to Congo and and, and talked to a lot of different Congolese people, one thing that really struck me in discussing Mobutu was that you know a lot of Congolese people link him to this very strong sense of national identity that many Congolese people have, mm -hmm. and for me, um, you know, I felt like Lingala provided some of this missing piece to explain. You know how you have this brutal dictatorship, which you know privatized the state and 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 devastated Congolese society, mm -hmm. and at the same time, emerging from that, you have this very vibrant sense of national identity. Oh, yes, yes. So, 
I feel like um, that kind of got me to, you know, thinking through really this 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 paradox, this mm-hmm. kind of core uh, idea of the regime is these divergent outcomes oh, yes. between uh-huh. the state and society, or between the nation and the state. Mm-hmm. And so, a challenge that went along with that was that. Right, so Mobutu was in power, you know, up until 1997, and then he was removed from power by the Afdel uh, sort of rebel coalition mm-hmm. in uh, kind of regional conflict slash civil war. Mm-hmm. And what happened then was that um, this rebel group came in and basically destroyed a lot of the archives of the regime. Mm-hmm. Um, so what that has meant, and then with that, right, that gave way to the Congo Wars, this devastating series of regional and civil wars, right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the deadliest conflict since World War II. Mm-hmm. So this combination of destroyed or damaged archives and um, regional instability has made it difficult for Congolese and foreign historians to, to really grapple with the Mobutu period, mm-hmm. especially from a, so- a more social historical perspective, which is what I try and take. Mm-hmm. And so... In dealing with these kind of methodological challenges, that mm-hmm. drove me further toward thinking about um, sociolinguistic approaches. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, yeah, really, I think, um, made me think about, about how, you know, we as historians can, can adapt and adopt these, these methods from other disciplines, from especially sociolinguistics and linguistic anthropology, mm-hmm. um, in, together in conjunction with oral histories, mm-hmm. in order to really uh, access and amplify sort of voices of people who can otherwise be marginalized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so that was kind of, I would say, you know, the, the process behind my dissertation as a whole mm-hmm. and then within this article. Mm-hmm. Because although it's, it's relatively preliminary in, in thinking through a, really a new approach that, that other scholars haven't really um, used within African history, mm-hmm. um, I, I felt like it was important to, to really kind of put this out there early and develop mm-hmm. and kind of test my methodology mm-hmm. as I was using it in the field. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, within the field, right, so I, a lot of my uh, field work in, in Congo, I did mm-hmm. from, 19, from uh, 2019 to 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, alongside my sociolinguistic methods, mm-hmm. um, I did a really a lot of oral histories. Mm-hmm. And I was able to do um, around 300, I guess it was 312 oh. uh, oral histories. Wow interviews um in in uh, six languages That's which is kind of crazy but uh-huh. um and, and so through that process was able to to glean right some of this um perspective mm-hmm. that, that i discuss in the article mm-hmm. um to, to kind of distill down into into an explanation of on the one hand what the regime was doing with lingala mm-hmm. and then how um congolese or zaireans as they were known at the time really experienced that mm-hmm. so yeah, that's kind of, um, you know, a bit of the background in terms mm-hmm. of how I got into this. Mm-hmm. And then um, a sense of, of how you got these right divergent outcomes. I, I like the emphasis on our social linguistic approach. Yeah. Um, h- how do social linguistic methods contribute to the reconstruction of, of this history? Just, I, I've had the opportunity mm-hmm. to talk to a professor Pierre Engelbert. Oh, yes. And he talks about uh, what he terms uh, the Congolese nationalist paradox. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, Pierre Engelbert is a really an excellent uh, political scientist and mm-hmm. just kind of Congo scholar who's mm-hmm. in, whose work has, I think, been helpful and influential as I've went along. And, mm-hmm. and his idea of this Congo, Congo nationalist paradox mm-hmm. is effectively, you know, asks why, on the one hand, you know, and anyone who kind of goes to Congo knows a lot of Congolese people, like you know that there people have this extremely strong and dynamic and mm-hmm. proud sense of national identity oh, yeah. and heritage mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and so what Angleber does is is looks at that in contrast to this the the devastating um mm-hmm. and destructive history of the Congolese state mm-hmm. right from Leopold um through Belgian colonial rule mm-hmm. to Mobutu to the Kabilas and and and, and 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 so looking at this kind of paradox where how do you have this country where you know the state is so damaging and, mm-hmm. and living in this nation state can be so devastating for so many people mm-hmm. and yet people have this really strong sense of national identity and pride mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so he sort of lays this paradox out and thinks it through um in relation to the state mm-hmm. but i take this up and and engage you know this with my 
oral histories and mm-hmm. with my kind of um, data set, right, mm-hmm. looking mm-hmm. at response experiences of the Mobutu regime, especially in related to language. Mm-hmm. And then through that, um, I show how, right, how the kind of Mobutu regime was actually effective at mm-hmm. at constructing and um, unifying, mm-hmm. um, you know, Congolese in this in this kind of national speech community through mm-hmm. Lingala. Mm-hmm. But but this was really um, complicated by the kind of um, destructive you know, patrimonial nature of Mobutu state mm-hmm. where people, you know, it was very extractive and exploitative. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so you have this state that is informally, right, using um, Lingala, right, mm-hmm. informally and orally using Lingala, mm-hmm. but um, even though it's it's kind of constructing national identity in part mm-hmm. through the use of Lingala, mm-hmm. it's also, right, through thinking back to sociolinguistic methods, mm. Uh, the, the 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 structure and character of the state mm-hmm. is kind of rebounding back onto Lingala mm-hmm. over this period, you know, from from the 60s to the 90s and mm-hmm. up to the present, mm-hmm. uh, in the form of, um, in part, what you know, negative language ideologies. Mm-hmm. So, getting back to that initial question, right, of sociolinguistic methods. So, within sociolinguistics, and then sort of at the intersection of sociolinguistics and linguistic anthropology, Mm -hmm. there's two really important concepts here of uh, language practices and Mm -hmm. language ideologies. Mm -hmm. So, um, I draw from the work of Jan Blomert, a um, Belgian uh, sociolinguist who actually passed away uh, last year, Mm -hmm. who really had just an incredible influence and and a lot of really uh, brilliant ideas right regarding kind of language practices and linguistic change Mm -hmm. and he developed this concept that um, that linguistic changes uh, index they provide a a really sensitive index Mm -hmm. for social political and cultural changes Mm -hmm. and so although um, you know linguists and anthropologists have been working a lot with these concepts Mm -hmm. uh, historians have not really engaged directly with with these methods Mm -hmm. and and I saw that even you know kind of early on in my program and thinking through African history as a discipline right Mm -hmm. it has this amazing and and really important heritage of of working with um, historical linguistic sources Mm -hmm. particularly right in this these kind of earlier pre-colonial periods where Mm -hmm. there there maybe are issues with finding written sources Um, you know so historical linguistic sources have been tremendously important for African history Mm -hmm. so but where I see it is that with some additional theorizing and, and kind of um, contextualization, mm-hmm. these sociolinguistic sources can also be valuable for African history, but looking yes. more at the recent past. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and part of that is because, you know, as kind of a source, right, thinking of looking at language practices, language practices in terms of, you know, how communities use language mm-hmm. and how that changes over time. Mm-hmm. If you think of it in that way, um, you need to find ways to kind of document, mm-hmm. document you know um, those changes and see how they, how they, how communities adapt. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. for me as someone who's working a lot with oral histories, mm-hmm. a challenge that I had, particularly also with language ideologies, mm-hmm. right, which are people's you know ideas, thoughts around language, um, is that those are kind of situated and they can change. Mm-hmm. And so. What I found was really important uh, and that I discuss in the article is that the need to really corroborate um, the oral histories that I'm doing in, uh, you know, in the present regarding kind of language and political power mm-hmm. with contemporaneous uh, sociolinguistic sources on the one hand, mm-hmm. and then also um, a, a number of interviews that I did with Congolese sociolinguists. Yes. So, you know, in, in each region, because I found that their expert knowledge Mm -hmm. um, and then also many of their publications Mm -hmm. provided a lot of helpful context to to be able to understand what you know other people and former members of the regime Mm -hmm. were telling me about the about kind of what happened Mm -hmm. yeah that's wonderful that's great Mm -hmm. now um, how how did uh, Mobutu and his regime uh, 